Hi everybody and hi to Graham Stanley over in Uruguay. Hello. Hi Joe. Hello everybody. <laughs> Hi, thanks so much for joining us today, Graham. Um, this is our second in our series of uh, three by three interviews for the LT SIG website. Um, and you can come and join us at um, ltsig.iatefl.org. Now, I'm really excited um, to be speaking to Graham today. Um, I know that you've been doing a load of things with the British Council over in Uruguay, um, but so much more before that. So, can you tell us a little bit to start with about your journey? Um, into ELT. How did it all start for you? Yes, of course. Uh, well, it's um, it's been an exciting it's been an exciting journey. I think. I mean, I started. I came late to teaching. I was twenty nine before I came into English language teaching, so I already had a sort of uh, experience in companies in London working, and then I had friends who um, who moved into English language teaching and. One friend in particular who went to Japan and she became a teacher and we kept in touch. And I was sitting in an office in London thinking, I need, I need to go and teach. I always thought I would be a teacher, but I was thought I'd studied history at university and I thought I'd be a, a history teacher. And so I moved to Spain, cut a long story short, and took a, an equivalent of what is now the Celta in Barcelona. And uh, started teaching, always thinking that after a year or so, I'd move back to the UK and become a history teacher. But then I had so much fun uh, language teaching, I, I really enjoyed it, I took to it, and I also took to living abroad, uh, that I kept saying, well, I want, more, I want a year more, uh, and then it was not enough, so I kept on, on doing it. And uh, carried on, and, and ended up, sort of investigating all sorts of things, took a master's in educational technology and ELT, and that, that sort of got me interested in all sorts of other projects. So I, I, I ended up working for a university in the British Council, teaching young learners, doing lots of inter, um, language teaching and, EL, uh, and interactive technology stuff. IWBs, etc., and um, really moving from one project to the next. Uh, I've been very, I've come myself very lucky that I've been able to sort of follow my interests a lot yeah. and, uh, and end up working uh, in what I'm interested in. So uh, I'm very lucky in that. And then I'm eventually, sort of three years ago, I saw uh, a job advertised with British Council in Uruguay working on the Plants of Val project which was right up my street. It was about around the time when I really thought I would like to have, uh, get my sort of teeth into doing a very ma um, a major project. I moved into project management and uh, I thought this was uh, the one. And uh, fortunately, they thought the same. Okay, let's get started with our, our three questions. Um, so, first of all, what is your favourite app or your book of all time? Well, it's, it's a very interesting question and a, and a difficult one. Um, I found uh, myself thinking of all sorts of apps, etc. But then I thought I'd uh, actually choose a book because when I was a classroom teacher back in Barcelona, um, I really found one particular book very, very useful. And that book is called Speaking Personally. I don't know if you know it, Joe. Yes. By Gillian Porter Ladous, I think yeah. is the name. And published in way back in 1983 by Cambridge. But um, it's full of all sorts of interesting creative ideas about how to use um, unusual things to promote speaking in the classroom, like graffiti and intelligence quizzes and doodling and all sorts of so a lot of creative ideas to get uh, students speaking. What I found, why I, f I think it's still worth recommending is, um, is that it's a really good book for promoting teenage, teenagers to speak. So I found it really very valuable as a teacher uh, when it came to getting teenagers to speak. So that's the book uh, I thought I'd uh, recommend to everyone today. Oh, I might go back and read it again. Okay, second question. 
who has influenced the way that you approach teaching? Okay, well, again, a difficult question to answer. I think um, it's very difficult. It would be very difficult for me to just say one person. I think, um, as I'm sure you and all of my colleagues uh, feel the same way, that we've learned so much from each other. I mean, I think there's so many things that you learn. Just observing a class, for example, uh, of, of a colleague is such a valuable experience. I think it's something that I really recommend everyone does uh, um, as, as much as they can. But I think going back in time, uh, there was a point when I really did, um, I was really influenced, I think, by teachers that taught me because I, I did have the feeling that I would end up as being a teacher. Um, and I know that I never wanted to go straight into teaching. That's why it took me until I was 29 to get get into teaching. But uh, because that was my my father said, sort of suggested that uh, you should go off and do something else. Even if you, you knew you wanted to be a teacher, you should go on and work and do something else beforehand. And I took his advice. But um, one of the teachers that I really was influenced by was someone called Mr. Fenge, who. Uh, when I was 14 years old, uh, was my English literature teacher. And uh, he was, uh, you know, a bearded, hippie-ish type guy, very laid back, great sense of humor. And, uh, you know, he brought the, uh, uh, the Hobbit to class and read it together, which was quite, uh, quite interesting for, for us uh, then at that time. And um, I think he really influenced me thinking uh, about the job as a teacher. You know, he, he was very patient with teenagers. He really didn't just lecture us. He was interested in what we had to say. He talked to us. He explained himself. Uh, he told jokes. And he also played a synthesizer in the school plays, which I thought was very cool at the time. That is cool. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of uh, my great sort of role models as a teacher, if you like. Uh, the other thing was, was later when I took my A-levels, I had a history teacher who was uh, someone called Mr. Mallinson. And he excited me enough about history to make me take it at university. And I think, again, it was his sense of humor, his passion as a teacher, his passion for his subject. Um, but also, not only that, he had a real interest in in actually conveying information, in, in making, not just conveying information, rather, in, in getting his students to understand and also uh, share his passion of history. And so he did this in all sorts of ways. So we had a general studies program that got us involved in playing uh, a board game called Diplomacy. And through that, he got us all interested in history. And it was a really sort of subversive way of getting people to study history. But I think it was uh, very influential, I think. I really appreciated uh, him. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next question. You've been a huge blogger um, over the years. What is your top tip for somebody who's new to blogging? Well, the top tip would be don't do what I did when I started blogging. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> Actually, that? as a link. There's a link to your first interview with Nick Peachy. Uh, I have Nick to, to thank, actually, because um, way back when he was uh, teaching English, a website manager for the British Council, um, I wanted to use a platform that the British Council had developed called uh, Global Village, and it wasn't available. And I had a summer course, and um, I was sort of really scratching my head and wondering what I was going to do. And Nick... Um, knew about this and he said why don't you blog uh, he wasn't a blogger at the time which is quite ironic given the amount of blogging he does now but um, he put me in touch with two teachers who were at the forefront of English language teaching blog um, and one of those Barbara Gia in Brazil was a real role model for me when I first started because um, she was blogging with her students and she was blogging for teachers and um, I really started taking her advice. Uh, but I got so excited about blogging that I started a blog uh, when I could uh, with my classes. 
I started a blog with all of my classes and I gave them all an individual uh, student blog, if you like. Yeah. And um, that wasn't the way to start because I was, I then suddenly had no free time because I was <laughs> constantly I can imagine. commenting, replying to comments and, and, and on posts of the students. So I think my first major piece of advice for any teacher who wants to blog is to start small to make sure that whatever project you do with blogging whether it's for other teachers or with students you're able to have the time to timely respond to comments which is very very important yeah. when you're blogging uh, to make sure that uh, that's done and that I think is the best piece of advice that I can give to anyone that is fantastic I've been taking notes <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, thanks so much, Graham. We're going to end this uh, part of the interview and we'll be Thank back for, for part two. Thanks, Graham. Bye. Bye bye.